Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So, two objectives with this video. The first is to give Season 5 a proper send-off and I want to revive a little game I played seven months ago when the channel was much smaller. Relates to that number you're seeing up there in the top right. And I want to bring out Lee's, not only because I haven't done anything with her for four months or so on the channel, but because the changes in patch 5.3 are going to have a massive impact on her and on the game, even though they're not directly about her. And I'll get to why I'm saying that in just a moment. But let me just quickly first explain this little game. So I did about 10 minutes worth of wiki research to work out what each of the vehicles would cost in this game based on their closest real world equivalent where they exist. Please don't take it too seriously, this is just a bit of fun guys. So having done that, I've now pulled into this video all the Leaves footage I have that you guys have not seen in any of my videos during Season 5, and I want to work out my total equipment destruction bill to the US and Russian militaries over the course of Season 5, 70 days. I'm going to try and beat this tally in Season 6 as well, so feel free to play along, choose your own specialist or vehicle of choice if you want to play. The second thing I want to do whilst we're going through and looking at this for each of the vehicle types is talk about patch 5.3 and why I think Lee's is going to be so important because frankly she is the counter to most of the changes that have just been rolled out. At the very least, that's the way I see it. At a very high level, we're looking at improved maneuverability and targeting for air vehicles, so that's going to be a lot of fun, they're even more lethal now. On specific maps, particularly exposure and discarder, we're going to see an increase in the number of air vehicles, specifically the attack helicopters and the jets. On Discarder we're going to see more ground vehicles, heavy armor. And the other generic change is that the M5 RPG have had their projectile speed slowed down by 17%. Now just dealing with that last one there, I know a lot of people might be saying, hey big deal, no issue. Reducing the projectile oh speed of the M5 and RPG by 17% might actually have more impact than you think depending how you use it. The window to hit aircraft before they flare is tight enough as it is. And I really don't see that slowing down the missile is going to help any with that. Here's an example of what I mean. I've just got a hunch, no proof, that shots like this just aren't going to land as often as they used to. But anyway, I hope you get the structure of the video. I'm going to go through each class of vehicle, share some of my favorite moments from Season 5, rack up my total bill, and where appropriate, talk about patch 5.3 and how I think it's going to affect the future, and why Lee's is your solution. So with that said and closing out the intro, we did an impressive $276 million worth of damage and if you just want to skip ahead, here's the spoiler, I did $4.6 billion over the course of Season 5. And that brings us nicely to our first topic of fighter jets. So one of the things I've learned practicing jet over Season 5 is that a missile will close on you, you see it there, way faster than you think. Coming in from the side is the very obvious weak point of pilots, they just don't see it coming. The other thing I've noticed through Season 5, and I'd be interested to see if it's the same for you, is since the introduction of rocket pods, there are way more dive bombers. I really haven't seen many air-to-air -air jet configurations. Now one of the things as a lead player I'm really going to be watching out for in 5.3 is whether the changes to the flight controls of the jet, the reduction in stickiness to use uh, DICE's language, really makes any impact on my ability to catch dive bombers because right now they're incredibly weak against these. So with the additional jets being added in on certain maps and potentially rolled onto more depending how it goes, I'm really expecting that we're going to have to spend a lot more time defending the air transports. You need extra protection, and Leeds can absolutely provide that for you. Check it out. As mentioned at the start of this section, there's also way more dive bombers. I spent a lot more time protecting tanks from incoming jets. Far more than I did in Season 4 and I expect it to only get worse. The irony though is when you make a tank your target, you basically tell the lead player exactly where you're going to be. And jets really signpost the direction they're coming from. So it's not too difficult a job for leads. Support your tanks if you want easy jet kills. Another highlight for me in Season 5 was having my skyscraper fights in orbital because since our class got reworked, we've lost the objectives on top of the tall towers there. Something I'm actually really missing. I don't like the changes at all. I don't know, there's just something very epic, battlefieldy about fighting at the top of a tall building. That's one of them. 
when the Jets want to attack a fixed location, again, it makes it very predictable to know where they're going to be. They have to cross the platform. Of course, that supposes your missile doesn't actually dust. Not that it matters, but the funny thing is after it passes through, the controls become inverted. It's just something to laugh about. Anyway, thankfully had a spare missile, so let's try again. There we go, two for two. Now, no jet section would be complete without nodding to the VTOLers. I love you so much. Thank you for the free kills. Unless you're in an aerial chase and you're trying to pull a Maverick, which is super cool and therefore permissible, I strongly recommend you forget your jet has this function. Anyway, let's see what 5.3 brings. Let's see if these adjustments to flight make it any more difficult to hit the dive bombers. I love shooting down jets, but time is ticking. You need to respect your time, so let's make a montage and speed this up, shall we? Unless those maneuverability buffs really do move the dial for the Jets, I really don't see they're going to be any problem for these players. So after that assault on the US and Russian Air Forces, we've done an impressive $2.1 billion worth of damage, or $31 million per day over the course of Season 5. Not bad. Okay, so this brings us to the stars of Patch 5.3, the Attack Choppers. Now for these players, the fundamentals haven't changed. It still takes two Lissals to bring down a full health helicopter, and they haven't had like a major speed or maneuverability increase, so it's much the same. What has changed is that the attack helicopter are now going to be more in number, and they're going to be a much more high priority target. DICE has given the attack helicopters two tow missiles instead of one, that's a big deal if you don't play them, in addition to having 25% reduction in damage taken from Wildcat and Flat Cannon AA. This combines to make the primary predator of the attack helicopters much easier to kill. Lee's, however, as you're seeing there, can still technically one-shot an attack helicopter. You see, he's falling to the earth, they're dead. And getting these one-shot pilot kills do happen more than you think. Although the vehicle's only actually destroyed if there was just one person in the helicopter. The co-pilot could always grab the stick. So yeah, can't say conclusively if I got the helicopter there or not. Back to 5.3, the gunner seat in the attack helicopter has been completely reworked. Here's a little bit of footage in the top left I was playing last night. This will also have thermal scope when I get the time to unlock it. So yeah, it definitely sounds like the lethality of the attack helicopters has gone up, which is precisely what DICE said they wanted. So over to you, these players. You're one of the best protections we're going to have against these helicopters dominating the game. I'm sure you'll be ready. I didn't see too many attack choppers in Season 5, so let's uh, close out with another mini montage. So after that, we've done an impressive $2.6 billion of damage cumulatively, which is a day rate of $37 million. Not bad at all, but don't get too attached to that number because we are about to make some serious money with this section. Stealth choppers were absolutely everywhere for me through Season 5. And in all seriousness, as a Leaves player, it's pretty much your responsibility to get rid of them. As I'm certain you all know, when they're in stealth mode, you can't lock on to them with any type of AA missile. And whilst you can down them with any other launcher, like the M5 of the RPG, or if Rao hacks them and makes them vulnerable for you if you're working in a group, the bulk of the work falls to Leaves. I really don't have any change in the advice I gave like six months ago in the guide about how to take these things out. The only addition I would make is like you're seeing there, just watch at the perimeter of the maps. They tend to hide over there a lot when waiting for their bombs to recharge. Try and catch them out if you can. Hitting them from above is also a lot of fun. Funnily enough, even though it's a small helicopter, the stealth helicopter doesn't have anything like the maneuverability of the Nightbird, which means when you're playing Lees, it's actually very easy to predict where the turn's going to be. It's actually quite a wide circle, and you really should make it a priority to get rid of a stealth helicopter when you see one because of the damage that they can inflict if you don't. Hopefully you guys have seen on the channel how much I like and respect the stealth helicopter. It's a fantastic vehicle and excellent fun to play. But of the three helicopters in its class, it is by far the most accessible, which is why I think it's one of the most popular. 
Unfortunately, Lee's is a direct counter to a stealth helicopter. It's just what it is. So given there's nothing to discuss on 5.3, let's speed this up. Montage time, let's make some money. I did say there were a lot. Don't worry guys, we're uh, very nearly at the end. Just hang in there. Only one more little montage clip to go. So after that little rampage, we get to a total value of $3.3 billion and a day rate of 48 million. This is getting pretty expensive. Okay, so this brings us to the Nightbirds. My honest advice is the moment you see one on the battlefield, go for it mercilessly. And that's not me being a troll. The reason why I think a Nightbird is uniquely dangerous to Leeds is because unlike a jet, which has to fly a vast distance, turn around and come back and attack in a straight line, or like the Apache, which is slow and needs a bit of distance to be effective, the Nightbird can cause you absolute hell by sitting right on top of the target you're trying to protect. And here's a pilot that gave me one hell of a time. Do you see how tight they're keeping it above the vehicle? Staying out of its range, absolutely pounding it, and the heli's too close, I can't help. If I was Crawford, I could RPG it. There are tools to let you take out a close flying vehicle. But when you're playing Lee's, you just simply can't engage something that's right on top of you. You've got to wait until you've got the right moment. And even then, it's not easy when they're keeping low. I was very fortunate that somebody was distracting the Nightbird during that fight. When you've got a strong Nightbird player, you really, really need to be patient to find your moment. A strong Nightbird pilot is also going to be really good at dodging AA. For example, this video here that you're seeing where they pop their flares, they go into cover, and then they wait until the flares have recovered. Now this Nightbird's been harassing a tank we've been trying to protect, and I know they're not going to give up, so we wait. An advantage you've got at least is that with the missile, providing there's a bit of distance, you've got the maneuverability to dig them out from cover. Nightbirds are also savage in the air-to-air -air fights. They go after your transports and your stealth helicopters, even your attack helicopters, which gives you a chance to attack. But yeah, honestly, my advice, keep on them. Don't give them a minute. They're just too dangerous to be left alone. Okay, one more time. Montage to finish up. Target is down! Right! Target is down! Enemy vehicle neutralized! Sadly for all that work, Nightbirds are only worth 2 million each, so we're only on 3.4 billion now, or roughly 48 million dollars a day. We'll call that a freebie. Right, this brings us to the last flying section, gunships. Formerly transports, now gunships. No changes for them of any import in 5.3, so let's just enjoy the moment. These are really fun to shoot at because, as you would expect, they're extremely easy to hit. At least relative to the other things we've been shooting at through the video. A slight repetition of a point I made three months ago in a tier one celebration video. The thing I really love about going off the transports is being able to tip it in the favor of your team. It's fantastic gameplay getting the shot off their chases and down and I strongly suggest you give it a try.
It's also great catching them when they're trying to hide. Enemy vehicle neutralized! Okay, that concludes the Air Force kills for the US and Russian military. We're at $3.7 billion, or a day rate of $53 million to lease. So that just leaves the ground-based vehicles. Honestly, all the way through Season 5, my philosophy has just been shoot. Don't ask whether you can kill it or not, it doesn't matter. Just shoot and hope that somebody else out there is doing the same thing, and be surprised and happy when you get a good result. You get a lot of kills, particularly when you're hanging out with tanks. But as with the air transports, Lee's absolute best contribution is she's the chaser. The one that would have got away from Crawford or from Boris doesn't get away from Lee's. One of the consistent themes of feedback you guys gave me when I did the Lee's video six months ago was that you don't think she's very good against land vehicles. So I'm just including this section, so hopefully I can change your minds to maybe give it another chance, because I think she's absolutely brilliant. So long as you set your expectations accordingly that you're not going to be able to solo a vehicle. So while we're curb stomping the rest of these vehicles, let's do something that's always a little bit dangerous and not for an opinion. So DICE has heavily alluded that there's going to be reworks coming down the line for some engineers. And what I would really hope, if anyone at DICE is listening or anyone with influence, is that Lee stays the anti-air, Boris becomes anti-personnel, and Crawford becomes anti-ground vehicle. I really think Lee's is pushing the other two out at the moment, and they need their own space, and they need their own hats to wear. Because right now, Lee's is smashing it. And honestly, after making this video, I'm wondering if Lee's is actually a little bit overpowered. Anyway, we have made it to the end. 3.75 billion total damage with a day rate of 53.5 million dollars. But if you did watch the intro and if you made it all the way to the end, the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed I'm still short of the number I declared at the beginning. And here is the reason for that. I made two leads related videos throughout season 5 and I haven't added them in. So by going through counting everything and adding them in and saving you the time of having to watch it, we get to my final number. Less the stealth helicopter I'm about to shoot from the sky. Last kill of season five. 4.6 billion dollars over 70 days of season five. If you did make it all the way to the end for that, I really appreciate it. I hope you guys had a great season five and I really hope you enjoy Redux. Guys, have a great one. I'll see you when I've got time to make another video. Bye-bye.